Rapid loss of Antarctic sea ice could be a tipping point for the global climate, causing sea level rises, changes to ocean currents and loss of marine life that are impossible to reverse. That's the stark warning from a new scientific study published in the journal Nature. The authors say the changes are having a knock-on effect across the ecosystem that in some cases amplify one another. Well, to discuss, we're joined now by glaciologist and ice sheet modeler Frank Patton. He's also chair of the Belgian National Committee on Arctic and Antarctic Research. Thanks so much for being with us. Firstly, explain, if you can, Frank, how exactly the authors of this report came to these conclusions and how big this decline in Antarctic sea ice is likely to actually be. Yeah, uh, good evening. So the authors, they brought together uh, several lines of evidence that was recently collected uh, across the Antarctic. And this, this goes from Antarctic sea ice over the ocean circulation over the Antarctic ice sheet. So the, the, the one that is lying on top of uh, or lying on top of the continent, as well as as uh, marine biology. And so if you look at the last century, uh, Antarctic sea ice extent uh, was rather constant, even with, with a very small increase in, in, in extent. And then the last years, there was a sudden drop in the extent of the sea ice, a drop that is larger than anything that can be explained by natural variability over the last 100 years. And one of the consequences of such a drop in sea ice is that, of course, you, when sea ice forms, it expels uh, salt and that creates denser waters that flow to the bottom. So now there is less salt expelled, less denser waters, and that has direct impact on the overturning circulation around the Antarctic. And the overturning circulation is, is important for the global climate. And there is already evidence that there is a slowdown of that overturning circulation. And then a third line of evidence is that over the last decades, we saw an increase in, in ice loss of the Antarctic ice sheet. Uh, and this ice loss is especially uh, due to melting, which is due again to the, o uh, to the ocean, uh, deep water that is, is pushed up on the continental shelf and that interacts with the ice sheet and melts it from there. And that leads to quite important losses of the, of the ice sheet uh, and the, the, they, they keep on increasing. And basically, when you have also less sea ice, you get an other interaction with that ice sheet because then winds and storms get a, a direct access to the ice sheet and they can even help in fragilizing that ice and, and, and creating more ice loss. So you see that all these different systems, they are interrelated and more, even more, they reinforce each other so that you get uh, yeah, stronger losses because of the interaction of those different systems. And Frank, you say the situation has been relatively stable for centuries, but you say we're now moving rapidly into a new era. So how concerned should we be about all of this? And is what we're seeing reversible? Yeah, so the authors, they, they talk about a regime shift and a regime shift is, is, is quite important because it means that the ice sheet or the whole uh, system around the Antarctic moves into a different state. And it's like a bit like a contrast. We had different states. We used to have in the past, we had ice ages, uh, which was a different state and then uh, warmer periods like we have now. That's also a different state. So moving into a different state, uh, yeah, makes us thinking about what this means for the rest of the world. And of course, uh, what happens in the Antarctic doesn't stay in the Antarctic, even though it looks like all the changes are happening there, but it has directly an impact also for our areas. Now, you were mentioning about irreversible. Well, many of these changes are also considered to be in a irreversible, at least on timescales of, of, of human timescales, because an ice sheet reacts very slowly to changes in climate. And we haven't seen all the change yet that should be induced because of the warming that we are currently experiencing. And as you say, you know, this is happening very far away from us here in Europe, but you point out that we are greatly influenced by what actually happens in the Antarctic. 
Exactly, because the Antarctic ice sheet, while it is losing mass, this is immediately affecting global sea levels. And uh, this is especially from the Antarctic. Um, if you have a loss in the Antarctic, the northern hemisphere is more impacted by those losses uh, than the southern hemisphere. And this is because of the changes of mass uh, around the globe. Um, and that means that we should be very careful in watching what the Antarctic ice sheet is doing because it could over the next decades or even hundreds of years lead to a more important mass loss that we are currently experiencing because of all those interactions and, and, and sudden uh, and tipping points that may eventually be reached. So how can we you know, protect the, the, this area and protect sea ice? You know, uh, is it all about reducing global carbon dioxide emissions or what exactly needs to be done to help protect the sea ice, both in the Antarctic and also in the Arctic? Well, several studies over the last years have shown that uh, these tipping points can be avoided if we keep global warming below two degrees. Uh, a recent study even mentioned 1.5 degrees. And this is something that we are dangerously approaching. Uh, so it's clear that reducing as quickly as possible our emissions will be one of the yeah the, the, the best ways for preserving that area and not only that area but preserving um, the uh, and keeping the climate cool and also preserving uh, keeping sea levels uh, to a level that allows for an adaptation to rising sea levels that is acceptable. Okay, Frank, we'll, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks so much for joining us with all of that and taking us through what it, what it means, particularly for us here in Europe as well. That is Frank Patton. He's a glaciologist and ice sheet modeler, also chair of the Belgian National Committee on Arctic Antarctic Research.